Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> so today we are going to continue to look at the day of the Lord. And we are continuing to stay on Matthew 24, 10. Uh, I, I put on here 10 and 11, but I think it's just 10. I'm sorry, didn't edit that correctly. Um, and I know that I keep going over this, but things that I have spoken in the previous videos, which you, if you have not watched, please go back and do so because each of these things builds on each other and you'll have a better understanding if you watch from the beginning and go through consecutively. So today we're going to kind of look at how this occurs, how, you know, it, Christ said at that time, many will fall away and will betray and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and mislead many. And we're, we're focusing on the false prophets that will arise and mislead many. So we're going to begin in Ezekiel 28, 2, that says, son of man, tell the ruler of Tyre that this is what the Lord God says. Your heart is proud and you have said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of gods in the heart of the sea, which means vast waters. Yet you are a man and not a God, though you have regarded your heart as that of a God. Verse six through eight says, therefore, this is what the Lord God says, because you regard your heart as the heart of a God. Behold, I will bring foreigners against you, the most ruthless of the nations. They will draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and will defile your splendor. They will bring you down to the pit and you will die a violent death in the heart of the seas. So we know Ezekiel is not actually talking about the physical ruler entire because in verse 11 through 16, it tells us that this is the devil. It says, son of man, take up a lament for the king of Tyre and tell him this is what the Lord God says. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every kind of precious stone adorn you. Ruby, topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald. Your mountings and settings were crafted in gold, prepared on the day of your creation. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for I ordained you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked among the fiery stones. From the day you were created, you were blameless in your ways until wickedness was found in you. By the vastness of your trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mountain of God and I banished you, O guardian cherub from the among the fiery stones your heart grew proud of your beauty you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor so i cast you to earth i made you a spectacle before kings so again satan was in the garden of eden he was the anointed cherub he has lifted himself up in pride in his heart saying that he is god and he also sits in the heart of the sea, which is a vast amount of water. As Isaiah 14, 12 through 17 says, How you have fallen from heaven, O day star, son of the dawn. You have been cut down to the ground, O destroyer of nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. But you will be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will stare. They will ponder your fate. Is this the man who shook the earth and made the kingdoms tremble? Who turned the world into the desert and destroyed its cities? who refused to let the captives return to their homes. Isaiah is speaking of the king of Babylon here. Darn it, I meant to put the definition of Babylon here. So I'll have to get that. 
So uh, again, who is, this is not the physical ruler of Babylon because again, he didn't fall from heaven. Satan did. So we note that it says that <clears throat> I will raise my throne above the stars of God and I will sit on the mount of the assembly. So the Israelites were originally referred to as stars in Genesis 22:17 and Deuteronomy 1:10 as was the promised Messiah in Numbers 24:15 through 17. So speaking of the little horn Daniel 8.10 says, it grew as high as the host of heaven and it cast down some of the host and some of the stars to the earth and trampled them. So the stars of God are messengers of the seven congregations in Revelation 1.20. In his heart, Satan says he will raise his throne above them, sitting at the top of the congregation. So we have discussed that the sun, the moon, the stars not giving their light, that there is a basis for, for a spiritual fulfillment here as well as a literal, um, because this is again mentioned in, in the previous chapter here in Isaiah. It's, it's mentioned in chapter 13. So 2 Thessalonians 2, 4 says, He will oppose and exalt himself above every so-called God or object of worship. So he will seat himself in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Again, we know that the temple of God is the people of God. We know this from 1 Corinthians 3, 16 through 17, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 2 Corinthians 6, 16. So the white horse in Revelation is given a crown to go out and conquer. Revelation 13, 7 says, Then the beast was permitted to wage war against the saints and to conquer them. It was given authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nations. Daniel 7, 21 said, As I watched, this horn was waging war against the saints and prevailing against them. Daniel 7, 25 he shall speak words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and shall think to change the times and the law. And they shall be given into his hand for a time, times, and a half a time. Now, Revelation also talks about the synagogue or the congregation of Satan in for chapter 2, verse 9, and chapter 3, verse 9. And God is not talking about the deceived in the world that announces Satan as their God. He's talking about the people, his people. Second Corinthians describes this for us. Second Corinthians 11, 13 through 15 says, For such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising then if his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their actions. So in Ezekiel 28 and 5, <clears throat> it says of Satan, by your great skill in trading, you have increased your wealth, but your heart has grown proud of it. Verse 16 through 18, by the vastness of your trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mountain of God and I banished you, O guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. Your heart grew proud of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I cast you to earth. I made you a spectacle before kings by the multitude of your iniquities and the dis dishonesty of your trading. You have profaned your sanctuaries. So I made fire come from within you and it consumed you. I reduced you to ashes on the ground in the eyes of all who saw you. Trade here means traffic. It's merchandise. It's rooted in the word that means to go about as a merchant, a trader sometimes referred to as a Canaanite. Satan is the merchant trafficking 
for the worship and the souls of men. Isaiah 27, 1 says, In that day the Lord will take his sharp, great, and might, mighty sword and bring judgment on Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, Leviathan, the coiling serpent, and he will slay the dragon of the sea. Revelation 9, 11 says they were ruled by a king, the angel of the abyss. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, which means destroyer, destroying angel. It's a place of destruction personified. In Greek, it is Apollyon, which means cause to perish, be ruined, the destroyer from the abyss, which is water, Satan. Revelation 17, 8 says the beast that you saw, it was and now is no more, but it is about to come up out of the abyss, the water, the sea, and go to its destruction. Revelation 17, 11, the beast that was and not and now is not is an eighth king who belongs to the other seven and is going into destruction. The, the same word for destruction there is the same word for destruction in Second or uh, Second Thessalonians. Excuse me. <clears throat> and if you think about the beast that was and is not now, Satan was the in the Garden of Eden. And his punishment for deceiving Eve was that his head would be bruised. Revelation 13, 3, one of the heads of the beast appeared to be mortally wounded, but the mortal wound was healed and the whole world marveled and followed after the beast. Genesis 3, 15 tells us, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. And he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. So again, remember Ezekiel 28, 2 said, Son of man, tell the ruler of Tyre that this is what the Lord God says. Your heart is proud. You have said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God's in the heart of the sea, which means water. Yet you are a man and not God, though, if you have regarded your heart as that of a God. So what is the water? Revelation 4, 6 says, And before the throne was something like a sea of glass, which means transparent, see-through, reflecting back as clear as crystal. In the center around the throne were four living creatures covered with eyes in front and back. Revelation 15, 2 through 3 says, And I saw something like a sea of glass mixed with fire, beside which stood those who had conquered the beast and its image and the number of its name. They were holding harps from God, and they sang the song of God, serv God's servant Moses and of the Lamb. Great and wonderful are your works, O Lord God Almighty. Just, just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Revelation 17, 5, 15 says, Then the angel said to me, The waters you saw where the prostitute was seated are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Revelation 17, 5. On her forehead, she has a name written, Babylon the Great, mother of harlots and of earth's abomination. God does not call those that do not know him a harlot. Sexual immorality, harlotry, prostitution is equated numerous times in the Bible as being the people of God turning from him in the marriage bed. It is the place of the covenant. <clears throat> they turn from him to commit fornication. That is sex outside of the marriage. It is idolatry. Idolatry is earth's abominations. It's making a God either in a physical form or inside of your own heart that is side by side or in addition to the Lord God. The beast rises up out of the sea and Satan stands on the sand of the sea in Revelation 12, 17. 
Ezekiel 27, 3 and 4. Tell Tyre, who dwells at the gateway up to the sea, merchants of the peoples on many coasts, this is what the Lord God said. You have said, O Tyre, I am perfect in beauty. Your borders are in the heart of the sea. Your builders perfected your beauty. Verse 32 through 34 says, And they wail and mourn over you, and will they will take up a lament for you, and say, Who was ever like Tyre silenced in the middle of the sea? When your wares went out to the sea, you satisfied many nations. You enriched the kings of the earth with your abundant wealth and merchandise. And now you are shattered by the seas in the depths of the water. Your merchandise and the people among you have gone down with you. Revelation 18 parallels Ezekiel 27. Satan stands on the shore of the sea, waiting for his opportunity to sit in the heart of the sea as God, the sea being waters, which are people, those who will reflect back his character. They are the image of who their father is. Revelation 13, 11 through 15 says, then I saw another beast rising out of the earth. This beast had two horns like a lamb, but spoke like a dragon. And that just means seeing one, it's used of a huge serpent seeing their prey from afar off. And this beast exercised all of the authority of the first beast and caused the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose mortal head had been healed. And the second beast performed great signs to cause even fire from heaven to come down to earth in the presence of the people. Because of the signs it was given to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceives those who dwell on the earth, telling them to make an image to the beast that had been wounded by the sword and yet lived. The second beast was permitted to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refuse to worship it to be killed. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the second beast. It is called the false prophet in Revelation 19.20. A false prophet speaks things out of its own imaginations, but claims that they are the word of God. The false prophet... <clears throat> spoken of here does not mean one person. It is pretending to speak the word of the Lord, but it is in fact an imposter acting as a wolf in sheep's clothing that Jesus said would deceive many. So it's a collection of people. He told us that we are to recognize them by their fruit in Matthew 7, 16. So it reasonably follows that these people have changed the definition of fruit along the way, or many would not be deceived. Now, Luke 6, 43 and 44 says, No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its fruit. Indeed, figs are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor grapes from brambles. Jesus is referring to Genesis 1, 11 through 12 that says fruit from seed according to its own kind is our, that's our example. So we need to think about what is deemed fruit at this point. We see fruit as a big ministry. It's, it's measured by wealth. And, and this is the same measure that the world uses to define success. This is why we honor celebrities and, you know, sports icons and presidents and whatever else people highly esteem. It's the rich. It's, it's you know, those that are famous that, that we look up to that they're they're like the icons but this isn't what the bible teaches us 
excuse me, I'm still getting over a little something, something with allergies here. <laughs> Jesus told us to be the greatest in the kingdom. We have to be like children, a servant being the least among men. Yet people follow the Christian celebrities because they want the same fruit. And, and this is what's been taught to the masses. God wants his people to be healthy, wealthy, and prosperous. Jesus explains what the fruit is in 8, 11 through 15. And I'm going to guess that that is Luke as well. Saying that the seed is the word of God. Some hear the seed, but the God of this world takes away the word. Some receive the seed for a while, but abandon it when trials come. Verse 14 and 15 said, The seeds that fell among the thorns are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the worries, riches, and pleasures of this life, and their fruit does not mature. But the seeds on the good soil, those are with a noble and good heart who hear the word of God, cling to it and persevere, they produce a crop. It has been taught to us that the blessings of Deuteronomy 28, without the teachings of the requirements of receiving those blessings, which Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 2 tells us, now if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God and are careful to follow all his commandments I am giving you today. The Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you will obey the voice of the Lord your God. But keeping his commandments has been turned into works. It, it somehow works to, to earn your salvation. You know, suddenly God has changed his mind about them. So we're, we're no longer required to, to know them, to learn them. We don't need them. No. What, what God really cares about, what he's really concerned about, is getting rich in his name. Using his name to amass wealth. And, and that's what it's really, really all about here. Speaking of the harlot in Revelation 18, 14, it says, and they will say the fruit of your soul's desire has departed from you. All your luxury and splendor have vanished, never to be seen again. This strategy has been extremely effective in multiple aspects, because if you don't know what God says or what he requires, then you can be taken in by any wind of doctrine put forth. But there is absolutely no way to know what God considers fruit unless you know his word. Riches and cares of this life are not the fruit that God cares about. In fact, Micah 7, 13 says, Then the earth will become desolate because of its inhabitants as the fruit of their deeds. So let's consider the, what the false prophet tells people. He, they tell people to make an image to the beast whom they worship. So the word image is icon. It's an image, likeness, mirror-like representation. It's referring to what is very close in resemblance, exactly reflects its source, what it directly corresponds to. It's a replication of its source. This is fruit reproduced after its own kind. Revelation 13, 5 says, Then the beast was given a mouth to speak arrogant and blasphemous words and to act and authority to act for 42 months. It's given a mouth from which to speak. Revelation 13, 5, The second beast was permitted to give breath to the image of the first beast 
so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship it to be killed. This beast is the false prophet. It is permitted to give breath to this image, and breath means wind or spirit. So the false prophet is given, it's, it's permitted to give spirit to this image and be its mouth. It makes a representation that mirrors the beast of the sea. Deuteronomy 5, 8 says, You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in the heavens above, on the earth below, or in the waters beneath. An idol is made by men in the image or likeness of God. The word is rooted in kind or species, like the fruit. It is the same word in Genesis to describe bearing the fruit with the seed according to its own kind. Exodus 23 says, you shall have no other gods before me. And the before here means above, according to, after, among, and beside. The image in Revelation is made to represent its source. Its source is the devil. And Jesus told us in John 8, 44, you belong to the, your father, the devil, and you want to carry out his desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, refusing to uphold the truth because there's no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks its native language because he is a liar and the father of lies. And remember that Satan said in Ezekiel 28 too, that I am a God and I sit in the seat of gods in the heart of the sea and that the sea is the people of earth, the multitudes, nations, and tongues. He has lifted himself beside or above God in the hearts of of people. The false prophet speaks. The word here also means to preach. It is the fruit reproduced after its own kind. It's giving breath or spirit to the false representation of God. This is blasphemous to God. And blasphemies means indecent, foul, vile, language, slow to call something good that really is good, slow to identify what is truly bad, that really is evil. It switches right for wrong and wrong for right, calls what God disapproves good and reverses spiritual and moral realities. Ezekiel 27 and 28 talk at length about how Satan is a great merchant. He's trafficking and trading among the nations. And this is buying and selling. Ezekiel 24 says, 27, 4 says his borders are in the heart of the sea, which are the people. Verse 5 through 11, this describes his construction as a ship and of those of the nations that traded him, perfected his beauty. Verse 27, 33 says, when your wares went out to the sea, you satisfied many nations. You enriched the kings of the earth with your abundant wealth and merchandise. Revelation 18, 9 through 11 says, then the kings of the earth who committed sexual immorality and lived in luxury with her will weep and wail at the sight of the smoke rising from the fire that consumes her in fear of her torment, they will stand at a distance and cry out, woe, woe to the great city, the mighty city of Babylon. For in a single hour, your judgment has come. And we know that judgment begins with the house of God. And the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her because there's no one left to buy their cargo. Revelation 13, 8 says, and all who dwell on the earth will worship the beast. All those names, all those whose names have not been written from the foundation of the world in the book of life belonging to the lamb who was slain. 
Ezekiel 28.5 says of Satan, by your great skill in trading, you have increased your wealth, but your heart has grown proud because of it. And all who dwell on the earth that are not written in the book of life, those not following in following Jesus in truth are merchants being trafficked by Satan. They worship him because worship and service is not about singing songs. It's about your lifestyle and what you pattern your way of living around. If we're not living according to the truth, we are being trafficked and worshiping Satan. Revelation 13, 16 through 17 says, And the second beast required all people, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, the name of the beast or the number of its name. The false prophet requires, which means to make, manufacture, construct, to do, act, cause, to receive a mark on their right hand or their forehead. This mark is the identification or brand mark of who is being worshipped, which is Satan. Ezekiel 9 gives us some context that this mark is spiritual. It is in the same manner of those who are sealed, which means stamped as a mark of privacy or genuineness by the living God in Revelation 7-2. We've looked previously about the right hand, scriptures about the right hand and the forehead, how Aaron wore a turban that said holiness to the Lord on his forehead. They were supposed to bind the words on their right hand. If you don't remember those things, go back and read them. That would be a great time to do that. So if you accept the teaching of the false prophet who is reflecting their false god, Satan, that has gone out into all the world, you are participating in being trafficked, a merchant buying and selling with the father of lies. It's why the foolish virgins are told to go and buy oil for their lamps in Matthew 25, 1 through 13, part of the harlot who has turned from the bed of the covenant, the great falling away, the apostasy. Now, I'm not trying to preclude the idea that there will not be some kind of literal mark put forth at some point because there are other scriptures about what these people are going to try to do to accomplish their vision. I just want to remind you that Jesus himself told us that it is not what goes into a man that defiles him. It is what is in his heart that defiles him before God. Beloved, the false prophet has been among us for years now. Little by little, the gospel has been completely corrupted. It's perverted. It's no longer that we are sinners in need of a savior. Jesus Christ, who shed his blood for the forgiveness of forsaken sin that requires we keep his commandments because he is the commandments, the living word of God, come in the flesh and dwelt among us. Nope, now it is Jesus who loves everyone and forgives everyone who dotes and elevates mankind with his reckless love. It's grace that excuses sin without consequence or even repentance. A Jesus that wants health and wealth for all that does not require keeping God's commandments because it's works. It's an utter disregard for God's law. This is a Jesus that is a genie that grants wishes, all the wishes, by simply decreeing and declaring, which is ordering God. To perform our words. Jesus is a slot machine in which money gets deposited. Of course, tithing being the the only part of the law to be obeyed, of course. 
And it's done in the hopes of hitting the big one. It's a Jesus who suddenly has developed some sort of an affinity for the world's politics. It's a devotion to the interest of the culture, which is whatever we deem it is at the moment. It's a Jesus that not only allows for indulgence of the flesh, but it actually satisfies the indulgences of the flesh. There's no need to reflect a Jesus that came to lay down his life, choosing to lay aside his will for that of the Father, a servant to his Father. No, instead we can heap up treasures on earth, the goal to be promoted by men as celebrities, calling ourselves anointed. We're untouchable. I mean, these people need bodyguards and limos and private jets so that they don't become tainted by the peasants, you know, while they're getting their special messages. They love their preeminence, the respect they receive in public, their titles of esteem. It is the gospel that has gone out to the world and none of it aligns with the Jesus of the Bible nor with any example provided to us by his followers. Jesus has been conjured up out of imagination, conveyed to us as an image in our minds. It is of God that does all for man without man being required to do much. I mean, you have to believe, but whatever that means. Jesus is customizable these days, you know, as if we're ordering a hamburger. I mean, we can just take off the pieces we don't like that don't agree with our outlook. It is diametrically the opposite of Jesus in the Bible. Simply put, these people have presented to us an idol. And because we do not love the truth, we have wholly embraced it. They have also given their idol a spirit. And this spirit is a counterfeit of the true Holy Spirit. It performs lying signs and wonders because we have not understood what true signs are. They can call on its power and it can heal. It can knock you to the floor. It can make you laugh uncontrollably. It can make you jerk around. It can make you talk like you're drunk or, you know, say some useless babble that they would then call tongues. And I'm not bashing tongues. I'm just simply saying they it's replicated. These, these people can even inform other people of things that they should not know. It acts exactly like the spirit that we see in Eastern religions. Its name is invoked to perform witchcraft and divinations in congregations called churches all across the world. They've shut the door to the kingdom. They are not entering in. They are not allowing others to enter in. And the converts are twice as evil as they are because they build upon their lies generation after generation. It's bloodshed by the millions. Brothers and sisters, we, we have made the Israelites look like absolute saints compared to the part of the apostasy that, that we have partaken in. If we have been paying attention at all during these messages, it is so plain that we are very near very near to our last opportunity to repent. And by repent, I mean completely changing your mind. I know that they have taught you things your whole life. Some of you have been in church your whole life, and, and that's all you know is this harlot, fake Jesus. And, and we have to throw it out. We have to change our minds and line our thinking up with the word of God. 
I ask you to take yourself before the living God and ask him if there are any false beliefs within you because only he can answer. Ask him if he knows you. Because I thought I knew him for a long time, but he did not know me. We have to be willing to walk away from these belief systems, from these congregations, from the books, from the conferences, from the friends, the families, the teachers, and the preachers. Forsake it all and don't let anything hinder you from knowing him in the way that he designated for us to do so. Go find the pearl of great price. Don't fear those people that can kill the body, but fear the one who has the power to throw you into hell. Lose your life for his sake. We are not forgiven of sin because we said some prayer one, one time. And the word makes this so plain if we are truthful with ourselves. Make sure that you meet the true Jesus because there is not forgiveness in any other. Do not take my word for it. Again, I, I'm giving you these messages. I'm, I'm giving you the clues. I'm giving you the scriptures. I'm, I'm trying to give you the word meanings, but I, I can't do that, that part of it for you. You're going to have to go search it out. And I pray that you will, because we are so close. We are so very close. Pray for the truth to be revealed to you because you do not want to be one of those people that hear, I never knew you. Be blessed, brothers and sisters.